go. Hi everyone, welcome back. We're doing another YouTube here for you. And today I am going to do a couple of ones. I've got Wanda here from the newest Stripology Mixology 2 book. And a lot of you follow Gudrun Erla on GE Designs. And so she's been doing this one as a quilt along and I had done it ahead. So here is my quilt. This one is a five inch square quilt, but I had 16 10 inch squares left over from a, another project. So I use those and that will be more of the, this was the Painted Meadows, I believe. And I had pulled out all the other, the oranges and peaches in another quilt. So this one I had to add, a lot of these solids I added in. Burgundy, the greens, just to get enough blocks to do this one up. Okay, so once I had done that one, we had some charms come in. So I kind of left that aside before quilting it and use the Be Mine charm pack here. And what I did to get a little bit more uh, darker colors, I added in a couple uh, strip and cut five inch squares out of this fabric and out of the floral. So I added more five inch squares into the original 42 when I was pairing them up. I only did eight blocks and I did the runner up. So I figured this out for you. So if you're wanting to do the runner, you can. we can always send that to you as an addition because in the book, they have just the quilts. They do crib lap, twin, full queen, and king. But today I'm just going to show you the block and the picking your fabrics more than anything because the block is in the pattern. So the first thing you're gonna do, there's you make two blocks from a set of 10. So I've laid them out like this, so it's looking like a nine patch. It's going to have a center block. So when I'm looking at it this way, one of the blocks will touch, the gray will touch the center block. And then the next block, these outside corners, will touch the center. So if I am going like this, I would have the grays touching that one and then the blue would touch all of these colors, which kind of fades into them. So I'm likely to go more with a darker one where I'd put the grays beside it. And then this lighter one would, see now it might blend too much into that one. So I might pull out that light one. Can you see that? Now it would contrast here, 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 and here a bit better. Now to show you that, so this is where, this is a an old, we picked this up, this is an Alex Anderson Mirage, and it wasn't even 42 in the set, and I have never used them, so I'm probably gonna end up doing some blocks. And it was a gorgeous one, Joanne had, I don't know if she got the layer cake in this one or not, but we had some of these fabrics in the store, like this one here. They were, it's a beautiful line. So I mixed them with another line that I had, these are my leftovers that I'm playing with. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to take these blocks away now. So what I would do is I would have opposite colors in corners and you'll see why in a minute, or you could absolutely change and have four different corners. So I might take that one out. I might take the, and go like that. And then I could have totally different colors that would be bordering here on the next one. And I know that kind of sounds strange right now, but I'm gonna show you why. So this is like a wonky uh, nine patch, right? Except you're not wasting anything. So I've shown the wonky nine patch before where you take your regular nine patch and you turn it and you're cutting two sides and squaring it up and you're cutting off big chunks of fabric. This design is quite clever and she does she calls herself G Easy with her designs, and it, she truly does do a good job of making that work. So what I've got here, I'm gonna show you. If I've already cut them, but I'm gonna show you how they would lay out first. So just like I showed you before, these were all the five inch squares, except I've sewn them now into the groups of two. And now you can see how that would have looked before. I did any of the cutting, okay? So I talked about those squares and then these ones, and then I might put this light one with them. So let's get that out of the way. So as per the pattern, you're sewing them together and you're cutting all of them the same way. And she gives instructions using both the Stripology squared ruler and your regular rulers, so that's great. Then what you're doing 
This one was called the A block. There's two blocks. Can you see the rotation here? One is going counterclockwise and one is going clockwise. Okay, so you're going to see once I start moving things away from here, if I take actually those pieces aside, oh, that worked quite nicely. Can you see the block now? And you're going to sew them together. So you're sewing everything together, pressing away from the center, and then you're gonna square this up once you're done. So that's the wonderful thing about her patterns. If you're not perfect, don't worry, you're gonna be squaring this up after. So that would be one block. Get that there. And the second block, this is why you're using 10 squares. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got one center there. Now I'm going to take my other center. Now these are going to go. So if I matched that one up there, that would have been that one. That color there is paired up that way. And you repress these on these ones. She gives you the instructions on what to repress when you do the alternate block. And there's my second block, my block A's. This is the block A, and you can see the direction on those. And how simple is that? So you're sewing on, the one thing you have to do when you're doing these ones is, you're going to start sewing, say this one on first, but you're gonna stop here. So you're gonna stop sewing and leave this flap open. Okay, it's a partial seam. And this is a really actually cool way to do a lot of the so fast, so easy pattern does it like this. So I've sewn that on and I press it. I add that one on and press it out. Add this one on, add the last one on, and then you're going to be able to sew this one down and then you can do your squaring up. Literally, I did all the A and B blocks in one night. It was really, really quick. So with the runner, you only have to do, I did two A blocks and two B blocks. So they all just alternated direction. And on this one for picking colors, so you can see I would have had these two colors here, those two. I did opposing colors, sometimes the same, because this one had a less variety. So you always have to do any of these based on what you've got available in your pre-cuts. So this one again, I didn't, I had the pinks across from each other and the lighter one. So there's gonna be a pair to this one somewhere where it's going to have these dark birds on the corners and the pink. And I believe if I go down here, that's it. So those two are the shared block. The centers are just switched out and it's amazing how it changes it because of the, you've got just small bits of color on those corners. So the dark one is here, but it's very dominant in this block. Then you're just laying your blocks out. She shows you how to do the sashing. And I use the stripe. And if you go online, she's got awesome pictures right now because it's been done as a quilt along. And I'll just show you. Okay. So the blocks are going together. The corner blocks are done the same as on the quilt. The bottom ones, I just had to do sashing in between them here. And I was particular on my stripes. So my stripes are all working the same way. She doesn't do that in the pattern. She would have these stripes running one way and these stripes would run the opposite way. And they all look fantastic. I'm shocked at how great this quilt looks because the blocks are really busy. But as soon as you add that sashing in, it's amazing. So this one, I was able to pull in a really cool print. They're great for stripes, anything with lots of flash of color. And like I said, go online and take a look at the Wanda quilts. You will be shocked by um, how wonderful they look and how the busyness of the block is actually really broken up well. Some did K facet and absolutely stunning when they broke them up. So that is the Wanda quilt. And once I had finished that, of course, there's leftover blocks. So I only used up, um, oh, I don't even know how many charms. I used 10 per group of two. There's about 40, but I had cut extras. So again, I thought I'd do a heart and I got really fortunate that I had come up on my screen at home was a pattern and some of you may have seen it. Pat Sloan has had it on her website and Fat Quarter Shop. And it's called, I don't know if Joanne can see that. So this is a download. So this is on my, um, on my computer, I downloaded it called Stitches from the Heart. So you can just go to Fat Quarter Shop 
and you can go in and just um, download it and it'll go right to your computer. So they show you the picture. Her versions were smaller, so I had to revise the pattern. So this one is uh, 12 inches. She does one that's 35 inches. So she's giving you quantities and everything, and you can follow this if you're wanting to do other ones. I've got one typed up for you to do the size of this pillow. So as far as instructions go, you can follow along. And I have this one printed out for you to see and how it will go together. So I've got this one and I'm gonna to refer to it later. So there's the color version. Here's the printed version right now to indicate how things will go together once I show you how the block is made. So that was easy to figure out too. And it was funny because I wanted to make a heart out of it. So the work was done for me. So the one thing that I think Kimberly Jolly is her name on Fat Quarter Shop, she uses triangle paper and she's sewing on the lines and then cutting on the um, solid lines, I guess. Anyways, I didn't do it that way. And of course you guys are familiar with <laughs> our slotted trim ruler. So this is what the ruler looks like. The paper's still on the back of this one. And this is the one I used using our two inch line. So I think you'll like this quick trick if you haven't done it before. So typically we're doing a half square and we're just drawing one line across and stitching on both sides. This time I wanted smaller ones. So I took the square and you mark the diagonals and then you're going to stitch I think you can see the stitching better here on that, on both sides of the line. And then you're going to cut, okay, you're gonna cut on the diagonals that you drew, and then you're also going to cut right through the center, which on two five inch squares should be two and a half. But if you wanna take a look, you wanna have the line intersect the stitching lines as well, there and there, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to And the thing is try not to move it around, but you know what? There is a forgiveness in this and I'll show you why. So there's one. So as you can see, from one or two five inch squares together, how many am I going to get? Look at that. I've got two in each quarter, which means two times four, I get eight half squares. And again, when I was figuring this out, I did this first to figure out what size I would use because the spotted trim rulers, we have the option of all the different sizes because you get two in the pack. And here's the other one, sorry. Okay, so this is the second one with my sticker on it from the other project I showed was the four and a half. So once I've got these done, I press, because you can just press those to keep the seam flat. Now look at that, I've got eight done there. Now what I do is I don't press yet. If you don't have these rulers, you can go ahead and press them open, press to the dark like that. Okay, and then you're going to open up your seam. And of course, you can use your seam roller if you're wanting to do this, or you can go to your ironing board. And that's what you would have, like that. And then you would take your square ruler and using your diagonal. So whenever you're working this, I'm gonna try and work it towards the camera, like that. Oops. Okay, so there's my diagonal on the line, okay? So I've gotta make sure it's on the line first, and then I also wanna make sure I can get my full two inches in. So now what I would do is I would cut on this side, cut on that side, and then I would either turn that, and then I would put my cut edge under here and cut those two. So that takes a couple of different steps, right? So if you haven't seen this already, so what I did is I auditioned and of course, because these would essentially have been two and a half inch squares, I know that it's gonna be a half inch below. So the two inch line, and can you see how that line would sit on there? On the seam. And then I would cut my excess away. And I can also cut the slots. 
So I can do that a lot quicker than I just showed you how I would have had to turn that. And there's no tails. So can you see the difference? There and there. Okay, of course I haven't squared this down yet, but I would have to take the time to do that. Now, after I've done this, same pressing though. I'm gonna press everything to the dark, flip it, press them all open because you're going to have, if you check this out, okay, there's my block. See how little it is, these ones here? So they're the small half square. So they're gonna finish at one and a half inches. So one of her pillows actually is smaller. It'll finish at one inch, which really shrunk it in. And she's got another one, well, if it finished at 35, they might be two and a half inches. I'm not sure, because I didn't even check it out. I just wanted to figure this one out. Okay, so you're gonna do, you need, and I've written it down, and I've got it all, like I said, typed up for you, that you can. Okay, so this is what you're going to get. Okay, I've got your fabric amounts, and I've actually written in here you need 47 of the two color blocks, which are these, to make the heart. And you need six of these, and then you're gonna need a couple of solid um, squares. Then you're also going to need the background fabric, and the background fabrics will fit in your corners, a triangle here and here, two corners, and a bottom strip, which I will go through for you to see. So you're just going to be laying them out as directed by the pattern. So here is the pattern, okay? So first part here was five by five. What you have to make sure is look at the way that they lay them out. So first one is the line is running from bottom left on your side to top right. I'm going the wrong way here. And see, I don't want to put this one like that. I get a different shape happening. I would actually have to get them. You want a mountain. So that's kind of what I always thought of, the peak. And then the next one, I'm gonna form the, if I got that going the right way, I think so. And I could go the two legs like that if I wanted to. So I've got a peak on this side and a peak down here, and I would keep going, and then the last one would finish it off going that, whoops, that way. So I still have the peak. And then you're gonna alternate rows, just like they're showing, pressing, alternate, back and forth. So you can actually, you don't have to press these open once they once you're done this. You can actually press them to the um, right or left accordingly. So now this piece here, there's the five by five square. If you look at the pillow, there it is, okay? So there's your five by five chunk. The other pieces here, there's two and there's just a slight difference. You're going to use at the ends of a row. So you've got five to a row. You're actually not putting in, you're taking that one out. So a solid square goes in and then you're going to have a half square and a, this is where those half squares came in. And then I'm gonna fill in the row and then do another one. Now that one is here, there's only three to the row. So if I continued on, my last row would just be a solid row of, and remember, it's just the peaks that you're forming, right? So that you're thinking of mountains and then you kind of get the squares forming in the middle. Okay, so of course, I'm not really being selective with colors here. You, you would wanna take your time to make sure. And I didn't have as many colors as you might have in a set, so that um, can make a difference in what you're choosing. And that one, and there we go, okay. So that is one of the corner units. That would be actually the bot, the out of the heart over there, okay? So if you look at the picture here, once you've got, you're gonna have these two units, so that is this on the on the left-hand side for you, sorry, my right. You've got a five inch square um, here, which was I had to make larger. So I've written down, like her pattern had it working. Um, oh, sorry, mine was five inches, hers were smaller. Okay, so I'm showing you here the five inch square 
and then you've got your two pieces. I'm just showing you all the lines that would have been seam lines for those hearts. Then you're gonna sew these two together, these two together and join them there and you've got the square. Then you're taking a 10 inch square. So these measurements are my own that I had to work out. So that's why you have to get the handout that will give you that I've uh, changed. Your 10 inch squares, we will cut in half diagonally to get four corners. So sew on opposing corners. So those two first and press them out and whoops, those two next and press those out. Then you're going to add on uh, this one and I don't know if you can see it. There's been a three and a half by 18 and a half inch piece added onto the bottom. Then because I was doing um, a pillow and I wanted a certain size, I squared it up through the center, which is showing you those green lines where they intersect as the dead center of the heart. So it was nine inches going out from center. And I used, of course, I was fortunate enough to use my 20 and a half inch square ruler. So that was very handy. Um, you, then you, but you don't have to do it that way. You could actually find your center and you could actually square it out from the center lines and do it four times and get the square that way. So once I got the square and I was making a pillow, she continues on differently. I wanted to, I thought it's perfect size for a pillow. I added a flange on, okay? So once I've got to the state of the pillow being like this and it's squared up to 18 and a half inches, or 18 inches, sorry. I think it was 18 inches, not 18 and a half. Then you can see, and I've got them extended. I have a flange. So on top of that border, I actually cut this time, they were one inch strips, folded in half, okay? And if this was my pillow, it's actually going, and I cut these into 18 inch pieces because it's square, so I had two strips, that's all I needed. You're going to set them down and I used a long basting stitch, so like with your longest length stitch, an eighth of an inch away. And each piece would have fit along there. So I can, you can go in any order. You can go all around on top. It doesn't matter how those intersect. I could do opposite sides and opposite sides. There's no rhyme or reason. You can see here, there's how the flange, I don't know if you can see that, how that fits on. And so the fold is facing in the center. So your seam, your raw edges are matched up. And what I do do, my little trick is, I cut quarter inch pieces of fusible interfacing, just a light, lighter medium weight, and I put it on the back side of this. And that just allows me when I'm doing the basting stitch to have a little bit more stability and I don't get a wave happening. And then once I've got that on, I've sewed two and a half inch strips all the way around, which was gonna make my pillow bigger than 20 and a half, which is what you want because you quilt it first, so then I quilted it, and then I trimmed it down, and unfortunately, I lost a lot of my pattern, so that was something for you to be aware of that I wasn't aware of. I actually ended up cutting off a lot of the quilting that sort of made that scalloped border stand out. I used fusible fleece, and if you want, you can back it with another fabric. I didn't in this case, um, but you can use a muslin or extra fabric you've got. And then the back is the envelope style. And I won't go over how to do that. I quilted it the same and I use 0.4 of a uh, length and hem the whole thing first after I've quilted it and then cut it into the pieces I need. That is typed up for you as well. And then you turn it inside out and you get to enjoy a matching pillow to go with your table runner. So some scrappy projects too, because they're five inch square so you can dig through your stash or you can do something for Valentine's Day. You still have time, okay? Happy Valentine's everyone and see you next time.